Yes. Alright, so I finished the video after temporarily quitting YouTube to pass school. Leave a like and subscribe because my channel is gonna die, man. Like, I, I swear, we only got 600 views in the last vid, but I know I can recover from this. If every one of the people who watched my last vid left a like, it would have actually been promoted by YouTube more, so let's try that out with today's video. I'm not telling you to leave a like right now, but please consider doing so if you want to help me out. Okay, love you, bye. A wise man once said, if Venusaur was so great, then why doesn't Venusaur 2 exist? They used Vileplume and said, okay, bring Venusaur back. In Season 3, Venusaur was introduced into the Gala region and has been used as one of the most threatening sleep powder spammers in the format ever since. But how good is Venusaur this year? That's what we'll be discussing in today's competitive analysis video. But before we start, I want to announce the last video's art contest winner, XTB2002. They drew this extremely cursed grim snarl that's been haunting my dreams ever since. It's honestly kind of freaking me out. If you want to enter this week's art contest, join the Discord linked in the description and submit your art to the art contest channel. With that out of the way, let's get into the video. Stat-wise, Venusaur is pretty impressive, which is to be expected considering it's the best starter Pokemon of all time. Don't at me. It's got 80 HP, 82 attack, 83 defense, 100 special attack, 100 special defense, and 80 speed. That speed stat can be increased using its ability Chlorophyll, which doubles the user's speed when Sun is active. Or you can use Overgrowth if you don't want to win. Looking at the stats it has, it has a pretty clear role. This thing's a fast special attacker. It's got some pretty great coverage and it has stab on both grass and poison moves. Because it has access to sleep powder, most people consider it to take more of a supportive role in game by putting threatening Pokemon to sleep. These will usually be the Dynamax Pokemon or anything that's just generally threatening. Or screw it, just put everything to sleep. Sleep's busted this format anyways. When's the last time Yawn and Blind Hypnosis were in such high demand? Alright, half jokes aside, Venusaur is a common sight in this format, even on non-sun teams. While Venusaur can be a threat by having double speed under sun, it's commonly used as a counter to sun as well. You see, because Venusaur is a grass type, it can't be sleep powdered. This means versus Charizard and Venusaur under the sun, your own Venusaur will be able to outspeed the opposing Charizard and put it to sleep. It's a shame when a game comes down to whether or not sleep powder hits though, that it's only 75% accurate, but most players have opted into improving that accuracy by using a popular item, which is a pretty good segue into... Venusaur doesn't have very many movesets, in fact, most of its movesets are differentiated by items rather than a stat spread or moves, but I'll try to give you as many as I can. So the first and most common moveset is going to be Wide Lens Sleep Powder. The set will have 4 HP, 252 Special Attack, 252 Speed with a Timid Nature. Its item is Wide Lens, and it runs Leaf Storm, Sludge Bomb, Sleep Powder, and Protect. Its ability is Chlorophyll. Wide Lens is actually a super useful item for Venusaur. A lot of games can come down to whether or not Sleep Powder lands. With base 75% accuracy, this can feel very unreliable. Wide Lens boosts all of Venusaur's moves accuracy by 10% meaning Sleep Powder now has 82% accuracy and Leaf Storm has 99% accuracy. You can look at this one of two ways. Either, oh sweet, I reduced my chance of missing these important moves, or there was only a 1% chance for me to miss Leaf Storm and somehow I managed to get it, I quit this game. Regardless of how you look at this, Venusaur can make or break games, and is extremely threatening just to have it on the field. Sludge Bomb can pick up KOs on a Tokus that has already taken some damage, and Leaf Storm does chunks to Excadrill, Tyranitar, and Milotic. Now get ready for this alternate move set. Don't blink. Okay, so Focus Sash does the same thing, except it misses more and doesn't get one hit KO'd by max moves. I'm personally too paranoid about missing Sleep Powder to run this set, and smart board positioning can help circumvent the issue of getting one shot by things like Charizard or Incineroar. And this item can be completely negated by things like Fake Out, Sand Damage, or just doubling into the slot. All of which are things your opponent will tempt to do to beat your Venusaur if they have more than two brain cells. But that's just me. It's actually like the third most used common on Venusaur. What's the second most common item? Life Orb. Venusaur plays a lot like a box of fights. Move fast, hit hard. If you run a Life Orb on Venusaur, it'll help it do its job even better. It got access to Earth Power this generation, meaning it can deal with fire types like Arcanine and Incineroar with Max Quake. If you slap a Life Orb onto this thing, all of its moves are going to be picking up huge KOs. Having Stab on Max Zeus is also really great, because it boosts Venusaur's special attack set every time it lands the move. You might think it isn't worth Dynamaxing a Pokemon with only 100 special attack and 80 speed, but for perspective, under the sun this thing's speed is higher than Dragapult's, and its special attack is just as strong. Because Sleep Powder is so busted this generation, I'd recommend dropping Protect to run Earth Power. This will leave you with 4 HP, max speed, max special attack Venusaur with a life orb, chlorophyll, and the moveset Sludge Bomb, Leaf Storm, Earth Power, and Sleep Powder. Also, I'm not going to entertain the 7% of you commenting, but Marcos, what about weakness policy? I, I, I ran weakness policy on my Venusaur and it worked. No, you don't get attention in this video. Okay, so I've said Venusaur is threatening so many times in this video that all of these people have a valid defamation case against me if they chose to pursue one. Please don't. But let me start by listing every Pokemon that can be outsped and put to sleep by Venusaur. Just kidding. Let me show you how many relevant Pokemon can't be outsped and slept instead. 
that's it. Now there are ways around getting slept by Venusaur, but I'll get into that in the section of the video where I'm not trying to overhype the Pokemon I'm talking about. Ironically enough, Venusaur can be considered a situational check to Charizard, meaning that it's objectively the best starter since it beats the other two. That's just math. What I mean is that with Charizard comes Sun. With Sun, Venusaur is able to outspeed and sleep to Charizard. Now most Charizard players lack the mental capacity to consider this outcome. They often Dynamax turn 1 and just let you have it. Venusaur can be run on non-Sun teams purely to have a good matchup versus opposing Sun teams though. Sleep Powder can also be used as a tool for stopping Trick Room, considering most Trick Room users don't run Safety Goggles or a Lumberry. Dusclops is not a Pokemon that enjoys being put to sleep because it leaves the partner Rhyperior right wide open to getting Leaf Stormed. I'd go more in depth as to how Venusaur plays, but it's literally just hee hoo, you go night night now, so let's get into how you counter that. Venusaur, contrary to popular belief, isn't that hard to counter. Like I said earlier in the video, Focus Sash is a common item, so doubling into the slot with Fake Out and another move is usually a pretty alright play to make. Venusaur usage has actually affected the meta, so its counters are becoming more prominent. Safety Goggles, Female, and Didi is one of the most common ways to beat it. It's already a great partner for Dusclops to ensure that it gets the Trick Room off, but by running Safety Goggles on it, you don't have to trade putting in Didi to sleep for reversing the speed tiers. Once Trick Room is up, Psychic Terrain Boosted Psychic should always KO Venusaur. Safety Goggles and Cinera is another pretty good way of beating Venusaur. Fake Out is a great way to break the Sash, and unless they run Life Orb Earth Power, you can reliably Flare Blitz for the KO. Probably the strangest check to Venusaur I've seen pick up usage lately though is Lumberry Corviknight. This set just accepts the fact that it's likely going to be put to sleep and heals it right off with Lumberry. It can then pick up a KO on Venusaur with Brave Bird. My favorite way to check Venusaur however has to be Fast Safeguard Arcanine. This is because it's not only capable of dealing super effective damage to Venusaur, but it also protects the entire team from sleep or any other status while it's at it. Its high speed means that it can reliably outspeed Venusaur outside of the sun. This will keep your whole team safe for status for 5 whole turns. Finally, let's get into the partners Venusaur will want to have with it. You might expect Charizard to be its most common partner, but it's actually only the third most common Venusaur partner. This is a testament as to how many different teams Venusaur can function on. Its most common partner is actually Torkoal. With the ability Drought, Torkoal can switch in and instantly set up the sun, which provides Venusaur with the speed boost it needs to get going. Next up is Dusclops. While Venusaur is often a fast offensive Pokemon that likes to be on Sun Teams, it can also be found on Trick Room Teams as a way to ensure Dusclops gets its Trick Room off. It does this by sleep powdering any Pokemon that would either want to taunt or reverse the Trick Room, making it safer for Rhyperior to come in and start sweeping. Finally we get to Charizard, which is another Pokemon that thrives under Sun alongside Venusaur. GMAX Charizard is threatened by rock and water types in this format, namely Rotom Wash, Tyranitar, and Rhyperior, all of which can be dealt with by Venusaur's Leaf Storm and Sleep Powder shenanigans. While I only listed a few Pokemon in this section, it's not a stretch to say that Venusaur can be slapped onto a lot of teams and find success. These are just a few of the most notable partners it has. Overall, I think Venusaur is an excellent Pokemon for this season of VGC. Its high speed and access to Sleep Powder are the keys to its success this year. It can find a place on most teams, so it's no surprise you often see it on the ladder. But what do you think about Venusaur this year? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you think it's the worst thing that happened to the format? Let me know in the comment section down below. Be sure to leave a like and turn on notifications so you never miss a video from me. Special thanks to my patrons for sticking around with me while I took a break to finish up school this semester. You guys are actually the best and I love you guys. Be sure to check out my Patreon page to see what perks you can unlock by supporting me. Thank you all for watching, have a nice one, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.